Uh, welcome back. In, in this recording, we're going to complete our query. Uh, I'd started in the previous one, but uh, here we have our three tables, gene list, our platform, gene annotation table, and our uh, data, our sample set. So uh, here under uh, query, uh, when you, typically when you click on uh, create, uh, and design a query, <clears throat> uh, it'll come up, but here I can get them back, just do show table. So um, yeah, we did create and then design, right? I'm trying to back up in my mind, sorry about that. So uh, we had our gene list first, and then the gene annotation table, and then the, uh, res the data table, okay? <clears throat> so that all the samples are here. Now what we want to do is kind of approach this in an argumentative way. You want to say, I'm interested in these, uh, the expression of the, these genes in my gene list table. So whatever gene symbol from that table matches the gene symbol in the gene annotation table, then uh, take its ID number and go look in this table over here for any that match, remember we've filtered now, we've gone from all the ID refs, uh, that's what that really is, uh, to only those where gene symbol equals gene symbol. If you want on this here, you can delete it, you can do the, the join properties, you can, there's a, a limited set of arguments you can set up in there, but I just want them to be equal. A very simple extraction thing that we're doing here. Um, and then uh, the ID refs. And then it's going, well, what are you going to do with it from there? Well, uh, when you first uh, set this up, there'll be columns in here, but we're just going to drag it. And what I did previously is I didn't do an ID. I'm going to drop an ID first. This gives us our number to sort things. Remember, I said that that could be useful. Now I'm going to go to the gene symbol. So assuming that the uh, the order of our genes in the gene list is important, the ID number lets us sort those at any time. If they're not, if the sequence from top to bottom isn't critical, maybe this is not such a big deal in your report, but that's okay. So I got gene list, uh, excuse me, gene symbol. Well, now I want to pull the gene title, see what uh, is the title for my genes from the, uh, the gene annotation table. I just kind of like to have that. And now all we need is our data set. So uh, I've clicked on the top one. I'm pushing down the shift button on my keyboard. And I'm just pushing the down arrow. I can uh, hold the shift key, go down to the bottom and click like that. And as you might know, if I'm using the control key, I can only select certain ones. Or you can do them one at a time, grab it and drop it. I've selected all of them and I drag and drop. Boom, they're all there. This is a good time to save. Okay, so query one. Uh, again, if this is biotechnology industry, GPL, uh, GMP, whatever it would be, you would have an SOP on how you name everything. Uh, I'm just going to call it gene list one. Query one, gene list one. Anyway, it's just good to save it so you don't run losing it. Because now what we're going to do, it's going to be a lot of numbers. I did, I, my gene list wasn't that long. But still, there's a lot of samples. I go to view. I have a table view. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and uh, you can see, uh, scanning down here. Okay, they're not in numerical sequence. I'm going to sort them ascending. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, of course, I should have matches because I took my gene list from there. But if you ge generated your gene list otherwise, here's where you check to see if you uh, were missing any numbers, you would have a mismatch. Then you got to go back, open up your gene list, your gene annotation table, and start looking for uh, what's going on. Um, maybe our symbol was not the most current one. And somewhere else we have a title for the gene. Uh, we can do a search in here. Or we can open it up in Excel and do a search there. It might be faster. Uh, I knew it was uh, ubiquitin. I, I see it right here in front of me, so I'm going to do that. Uh, look in the current field. Uh, I can do, yeah, current field. I've selected that column. Uh, any part of a field 
can search all of them, match the case, right? So you can set up your argument there. Oh, there's one. Oh, that's what it's supposed to be. Well, I now go and use this. I can copy this, right? And have my gene list table open. I go, oh, I wanted that one too. You know, so I just paste it there. Now I've got another one. So save my gene list. Or you would have corrected the one that was missing, right? If 2019 was the one that was missing, then I need to uh, replace that one with the correct one that would uh, do it. So again, assuming you generated your gene list from other sources, here I took mine right from the gene annotation table, so you know there was going to be a perfect match. Right? But maybe you typed wrong. Maybe there was transcription error, right? Something like that. Um, so, okay. So, um, Save, close, and uh, I don't need this anymore. Doesn't really matter. I can close that. I'll say yes. What, a, what the heck? Uh, now I refresh, right? And so I should have uh, these stayed in, uh, ordered in numerical sequence. Now I've got the new gene on there. Okay, so you can go back and forth and, and stuff like that. Well, now this has my. Uh, genes. You see some of them are represented more than once. So why are they represented more than once on there? Uh, maybe these, we, I mean, we're playing a different game with this. We're just trying to get some numbers to do some statistics on more than one uh, of these. Okay. Uh, so now what I want to do is get this into Excel. So external data. I should be able to go to an Excel file. Desktop. Browse. I'll call it uh, gene list one. Remember that was the name of my query. Does not exist. Okay, I guess you gotta go there and then file not found. See what what's going on here? I did did I click in or out? external data in okay yeah can't find one that is okay <laughs> click the right button and it works better <laughs> okay there we go I don't need to browse or anything it's going out as a okay export data with the formatting and layout if you want that anyway nothing special in this one so now I can come back to Excel I'm gonna close that that's all my original data file open Go into my desktop. Now I want my uh, Excel files. I just automatically named it uh, Query Gene List One. Okay. So here we are. So now what I'm uh, going to do. Let's see. If we go back to here, we had 92 of these. So you can see the code for the sample. The code assigns them to the uh, study group. So there's this, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of those, right? And then there's nine of these. Uh, and then count them up. So we now need to decode our samples in Excel to assign them to their study groups. If I uh, file, I'll have to bring in the text again. If I had saved it as uh, matrix original, I could open that now and, and do this, but I'm going to have to look at the text files because I didn't do that, but that's all right. Here's my original. Just click finish because I know it's okay. <clears throat> Waiting for that to open again. So one of these rows, that and that, okay. So this row has the geo ascension number. And this one has the uh, you know, decodes it, assigns it to this treatment group. So I'm going to copy this row. I'm clicking on the number to select the whole row. Right click, copy, going to another sheet. I'm going to do paste, paste special, however you get there. You want to transpose it. Okay, so I want to turn a row into a column, so I'm transposing it. And I want to come back to that first worksheet. And here's this described the samples. So copy it and transpose into the 
the B column. Okay. So now I, I could uh, save this as a, a table, go back into um, the database and use develop a query to sort out all of my data sets. Conveniently, these are in numerical order, so um, what I'm going to do is just I mean, I'm not I'm going to disregard these for right now, but you could do it to, to divide them out. I had to pause the recording for a minute there. So this is a way that you can uh, sort them out. Okay, so I'll just leave that for you. Uh, what I'm going to do is say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. In class today, we talked about um, one, two, three, four, five, determining uh, proper sample sizes and things like that. I just want two groups. Okay, so I want to do a T statistic. So the the challenge here is. Uh, I can't generate an average of these. So what I want to do, and this might not be the best way to do it, but that's fine with me. I'm just going to... Oh, well, these didn't come out as sorted. Let me show you how to sort. Uh, so I'm doing shift, holding that down, clicking the end key on the keyboard, and then the down arrow, holding the shift button still, end key, right arrow, so that selected my entire data set. I want to make sure, I didn't, I'm not double checking, but you should scroll with your scroll bar to double check. And uh, I want to sort by the first column, so uh, I can click this one. You can also come here and then tell it uh, sort by ID. Boom. Now if I only did it on one column, it would only sort that once. So that's different than in the database. In the database, I clicked on one column. In the database, your, low, your rows and your columns are locked. In an Excel spreadsheet, they are not locked, so you need to select your whole table. If you do, if you sort wrong in Excel, all your data is in the wrong place. Okay, so it's an important thing to demonstrate. So, okay, what I'm going to do is uh, I just want these here: Shift and down arrow, and I'm going to go home. Oh wait, uh, let me do one other thing. You can you can average these. Uh, let me do my whole end right arrow and down arrow. You can come to data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove duplicates. Okay, it's not the greatest thing to do. So I'm going to unselect all of them. I'm going to just get rid of them. If a gene symbol shows up once, uh, I don't know which one to get rid of, but I only want all, each of them once. You can treat them as uh, sample replicates, right? So you can save this as an original and now do the. the and then you'd average your sample replicates. Okay, I just averaged my sample replicates. Right? I didn't really do that, but that would be averaging your sample replicates. So if you're doing your quality control, quality assurance, and stuff like that, you know, you did your sample replicates. I just compressed them. I don't know which one it ended up with. And then here's my biological replicates. Now these are not assigned to the proper groups and stuff like that. So I'm going to have problems with the things, but I want to what I want to do is transpose these and I'm going to do it in, in chunks. So I'm going to copy here. I don't know why it's not showing me my other spreadsheet. <clears throat> Let me just do it down here. And paste, paste special, transpose, boom. Then I can get my data set. Copy, come here, paste special, transpose. So you see what I did? And uh, let's see. <clears throat> so I need to, to separate the other one too. That uh, I don't have much time to do it, but let me just get it here. Copy. Again, this is not the, the best way to do it. If I could interdigitate these two, so it would be one, one, one prime, two, two prime, and stuff like that, probably would be better. Just trying to figure out. Now this, this arrangement here will work great in, <clears throat> in JMP, but when we come in here to do on any one of these, right, this is treatment group one, treatment group two for one biomarker. So now we do a data, data analysis, uh, our t-test. I'm gonna say paired. I don't know. 